All right, so uh, the same the same talk of this afternoon yeah, is given by uh, Matthias Flaher from uh, Caltech. Uh, the title of his talk is uh, the gamma filtration on k serial. So uh, please, Matthias. Okay, thank you very much um, for the invitation to speak at the workshop. And I'm going to talk about a topic in K theory and um, which may be a little bit disjoint to the other talks at the conference. So please feel free to ask questions. Um, so more specifically, I'm going to talk about the gamma filtration. So let me first start by giving some history. What's the origin of the gamma filtration? Um, so Grotendieck in the mid 1950s was thinking about uh, churn class maps. <coughs> Which are invariants of, uh, of vector bundles on some on some scheme, and um, they live in some cohomology theory associated to the scheme. Um, and there are many possible choices uh, for such a theory. which you all have the same formalism. For example, um, you can take the usual singular cohomology if your scheme lives over the complex numbers um, or the et al variance. Um, it's the L coefficients. Um, in which case, if you're not over an algebraically closed field, you have to take the right tail twist. Um, or you could take a slightly more universal theory like the Chow groups. And um, many other possibilities. And his motivation was to formulate the riemann roch theorem. And actually for each of those theories, you would have a different formulation. Um, and so he was looking for some kind of universal cohomology theory, which is the target of these chunk class maps. Um, maybe I should say before I go on that these um, churn classes satisfy various identities with respect to direct sum, tensor product, and exterior powers of vector bundles. In particular, the um, identities imply that they factor over the k0 of x. So you get actually a group homomorphism. No, not a group homomorphism, just a map for now from K0 to these, to this. Um, yeah, so you have um, a class in every degree, in every even degree, or in the child groups, just the usual degree. Um, and so his question was is there a universal such theory? In which one could formulate the um, Riemann-Roch theorem, and in particular through which all the other ones um, factor. The Chow group comes pretty close. For example, there is a cyclic class map from the Chow group to the Etal, Betty, and Durham cohomologies. Um, but he was looking for a theory that you could actually construct. Um, out of K theory itself. <clears throat> Whereas the Chow group have a definition that's independent of K theory and many of the properties rely on the moving lemma and projectivity assumptions, which he tried to, to eliminate from his, from his reasoning. Okay, so the first attempt for this theory um, works only for, for regular schemes. Because for regular schemes, um, the K0 of vector bundles agrees with the K0, which is often called G0 of coherent sheaves, because every coherent sheaf has a finite resolution by vector bundles, at least in the quasi-projective case. 
And so um, you have a natural filtration on G0 given by co-dimension of, of support. So this is the first attempt to take the topological filtration um, given by um, co-dimension of support. And, um, and it turns out that the churn class maps, there's a theory of churn classes in the corresponding graded theory. Um, which is slightly coarser than the Chow theory. So it turns out that the Chow groups map onto this graded pieces um, in the obvious way by sending a cycle to uh, the, the class of the structure sheaf. And, um, and this map has torsion kernel. It's subjective and it has torsion kernel. So rationally, it's the same theory. So you have some CN here. Um, through which, yeah, it's, it's slightly coarser than the churn classes in Chow groups because of this torsion kernel. The Chow groups give a finer invariant. And, um, but to, to prove properties of this topological filtration, one still had to use moving lemma and arguments to try to avoid. And um, you, you also need this regularity assumption, which in his mind was uh, overly special. So um, his second attempt was much more general. Um, and it was based on the observation that um, this trunk class on K0, uh, which I called C and tilde up there, I mean, it takes part in the graded pieces. So it's again, an element in the K0, somewhat higher up in the filtration. And it turned out there's an explicit formula for this element. So if you start with the class of a vector bundle E, um, there's a formula involving explicit um, combinations of the exterior power operations, which we call the gamma operations, um, apply to E minus, if I have to make it a virtual rank zero. So E minus its rank times the class of the structure sheaf, um, which is the unit element in the K zero. So K zero is a ring under tensor product and always the unit. Um, and so based on this formula, um, he um, came up with the idea to use the lambda ring structure on, uh, on K0 uh, to define a filtration and then define churn classes in the graded pieces. And he did it in the most universal way given this formula for C and tilde, namely, um, um, we made the following definition, the gamma filtration. On the, so it not only depends on the lambda ring K0, it depends on the augmented lambda, augmented by the rank map. Um, um, rank uh, going to the, uh, the rank takes integer values and it's, local, it's a locally constant function on on the scheme, let's call this augmentation epsilon. And, um, and it's defined as F gamma I K zero X as the additive group generated by all products of gamma operations, I one up to I S where the X um, J are in the kernel of the augmentation map so they have virtual rank zero and the degree is some up to something greater or equal to I. And almost tautologically, the gamma n defined churn class maps um, in the graded pieces of the gamma filtration. And it turns out because of the above formula, the, the the gamma um, graded pieces also map to the topological filtration, not subjectively anymore. And the Chow maps are also to this. And all three theories agree rationally. So, so this map here is neither injective nor surjective in general. 
but it has torsion kernel and co kernel. So rationally, all three are the same theory. And for this purpose that he had in mind to formulating the riemann roch theorem, it really only matters uh, to, to construct a rational theory. So these gamma um, uh, graded pieces, they, they were a perfectly sufficient target for his purposes. And um, the big advantage of this construction is its generality. So it doesn't uh, rely on any moving lemma or a, um, a one invariance like Chow groups. And the definition is very general. You can define it um, basically in the same generality as K groups. So that defined for any locally ringed uh, topos. And um, in particular, any scheme uh, regular or not. And they do not rely on moving lemmas on a one invariance. Um, okay, so, um, and then after this initial work there, I've checked the literature, there's hardly any more work on the gamma filtration because as a theory in itself, rationally it agrees with the other theories. So um, people were mostly working with uh, child groups and, and so on. And integrally one cannot prove that much about it as it turns out, but Anyway, it's still a nice definition because of its uh, generality. So the goal of my talk today um, is to generalize um, this gamma filtration to the K theory spectrum or space depending on your point of view. So it's either a spectrum or an infinite loop space. So to X, you not only have associated the abelian group K0, um, but you have associated an entirely infinity ring spectrum, which I call K of X. And then out of this, you can extract the K groups of which K0 is only the first one. So it gives you a graded commutative ring. Um, I star of X, I star of K of X, which are the algebraic K groups. And K0 is just the first one, okay. I0. So if you don't know what the infinity ring spectrum is, um, you can think of it as a, commutative ring um, structure on a topological space rather than on a set. And then pi zero gives a commutative ring in the usual sense. Um, okay. And so um, on the level of K groups, the gamma filtration has been defined. So let me for Comparison now call this the classical gamma filtration. So let me put a CL here for classical. And um, the classical gamma filtration. The K groups has been defined very soon after the higher grade K groups had been defined. by Kratzer and Soleil. And um, a key property of this, of this uh, gamma filtration is that the graded pieces rationally, so let me just say index Q means tensor with Q, um, agree with Motivic homology Here you can take either higher Chow definition or Wojewodski's definition, but 
under some assumptions, this is again the key assumption that X is regular. So let's take the higher child definition. So because Wawonski's definition doesn't quite work for arbitrary regular schemes. So these are blocks higher child groups, tens of Q. So on the level of rational cohomology groups, we kind of know what, what we're aiming for. But I want to lift this filtration to a filtration on the spectrum or the space. And, and thereby also eliminate this regularity assumption. Um, so let me be a bit more specific about my goals. Um, so the F star gamma Q of X would be a filtered infinity ring associated to the augmented um, ring, E infinity ring K of X. So this has the same, I mean, it, it first maps onto K zero by the Kosnikov truncation of the K theory space or spectrum. And then it maps to the, to the rank, um, by the rank to this very simple group H zero X C. Um, <clears throat> so that's the first um, statement. And um, the zeros graded piece, of course, should just be the, um, the part coming from the augmentation. And because it's a filtered E infinity ring, the associated graded spectrum is, is a graded ring but everything will be a module over the zeros graded piece. So this will be Allenberg McLean spectra. So, so let me call R gamma sub little gamma XCN. So I'm using a notation reminiscent of motivic homology. So this is defined as the graded piece, the gamma filtration um, with an appropriate shift minus two N. And so this is now H0XC module spectrum. In particular, uh, Eilenberg McLean uh, spectrum. So you can think of it as a complex of being groups. And so this would be a version of motivic homology that's defined for any locally ringed uh, topos. I mean, this is just a tautological definition. Once you have this graded E infinity ring with the zeros graded pieces, Einberg McLean ring, then you get this as a consequence. And, um, and then this third property would be, of course, it should recover the, the um, gamma filtration on, on K0. So, so the image, on homotopy groups on pi zero more specifically of the i filtered piece. So this is now again a spectrum. So it has a pi zero and the image in the pi zero of K of X, which is K zero. Um, this should be the classical gamma filtration as defined above. So the main result I have so far is that um, filtration satisfying ABC exists. Um, which is quite nice, particularly it recovers the usual gamma filtration on K0, but of course you also want to recover 
the usual gamma filtration on the higher K groups. And this I cannot yet prove. Um, so let me briefly mention what we also want. Um, if you look at the, um, the weight one motivic homology, so this would be the first graded piece, the next one after, after the um, zeroth graded piece. Um, of course, you want this to be the usual weight one motivic homology. So it should be the units of your scheme or locally ring topos for um, i equals one. And it should be the Pika group of x i equals zero. Uh, sorry, for i equals two. Because of this, because of this shift minus two n and zero otherwise. And um, with, with the definition I have, I can only show that D holds um, if and only if. Hi, Matthias. Yes. I was interrupted. Someone came to the office and ah. I lost some slides. Could you show me the last three or four slides? Just, just oh, very okay. quickly. So you just got, came into the talk? Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I listened to the, all the beginning. Let me see. Ah, OK, yeah. Goal, goal, um, goal. That's it. OK, yeah. You want to introduce this gamma filtration on the E infinity ring spectrum. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. So I will um, say later on what I exactly mean by a filtered E infinity ring, but that's a standard notion, which okay. I'll come back to. And um, yeah, graded zero, grade, graded zero is the Right. H0 XC, and then on the classical, on K0, we get the classical gamma filtration. However, we can only talk about the image on pi zero. So um, because the gamma filtered piece is a spectrum, there's no particular reason why this map on pi zero should be injective. And, um, and that problem comes again here. If I look at the weight one graded piece, I can show it has the expected structure if and only if the map on pi i is injective. So in this case, it would be the, the graded one. So it's the quotient of f2 by f1 by f2. So that's the relevant map here. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Sorry, Matthias. Yes. Hi. Oh, another question. Yeah, excuse me. Um, <clears throat> if the, the ring topos is, for example, the etal topos of some scheme, do you yes. still expect that the cohomology is zero? Would, wouldn't you get the Brow group in degree oh, three? Oh, yeah, yeah. OK, OK. That's just because I, I'm not aware of motivic cohomology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, OK. Right, okay. right. right. Okay. OK, so um, um, OK, OK, never okay, mind. So let's say, let's say X is key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, OK. okay. Sorry, so, sorry. I'm uh, the... being too sloppy here. <laughs> <laughs> so X is a, a usual scheme. So we're talking about the risky topos. Yeah. Okay, 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 good. Thank you very much. Um, and um, yeah, unfortunately, I cannot prove this. I cannot. It, this will hold if and only if this maps on pi i is, is injected. And I don't know how to control these these kernels. And uh, but I'm I'm assuming with my definition there will be non-trivial kernels. Um, and then of course. Um, for consistency, rationally, you also want um, for a, a regular scheme. Yeah, so, so, so the first part should be maybe true for any scheme. Yeah, I, have to, I haven't really, so this weight one cohomology, even for a scheme that's not regular, I'm not sure if one should expect this, but So how can I say, yeah, well, uh, um, yeah, no, I mean that the graded pieces of the gamma filtration on K0 is peak. This is more general than for regular schemes. So let's be optimistic and say any scheme here. But the next point should be true for regular schemes, namely that rationally, um, this gamma cohomology 
the tensor with Q, you should, of course, get the usual motivic energy in the higher charge groups. Um, <clears throat> but this seems, uh, this I cannot prove yet, but it seems to be pr within reach. So this seems not so far away. Um, but before it's written down, one shouldn't be saying this. Um, whereas the part D, I really don't know how to com control these kernels. So I'm sure. I, my suspicion is that you have to et al. Shifify these gamma cohomology groups to get something reasonable. Um, okay. So let me say a little bit more about the construction. Uh, the first step is to make a definition. So a gamma filtered lambda ring is a filtered commutative ring. So this is again a very standard notion that you find, for example, in Tia McDonald or in other books on commutative algebra. So it's just a ring F0 with a sequence of ideals so that the product of n times Fn, Fn plus n, um, together with a lambda ring structure on F0. So that uh, two conditions hold. First of all, the ideals Fi are actually um, lambda ideals. So the quotient would get a lambda ring structure. So this just means they're, they're preserved by all lambda operations. Not quite all of them, but the ones where n is greater equal to one. The lambda zero operations is uh, sending everything to the constant one, and of course, one is not an ideal in general. Um, so that's the first condition. And secondly, if you look at the gamma operations, they send F1 to, FI, to Fn. This is for all n. So it's a very simple definition, and it's, it's certainly satisfied for the classical gamma filtration, if you look at the definition up here, um, by, by construction, it's multiplicative because it takes the things generated by all products. And also by construction, gamma n of x lies in, um, I mean, gamma n applied to some x in F1, which is the kernel of epsilon, lies in Fn. And so one has a forgetful factor. From gamma filtered lambda rings to um, augmented lambda rings, sending this gamma filtered lambda ring uh, just to F0 um, mapping to the augmentation F0 over F1. Recall F1 was a lambda ideal, so that's again a lambda ring. And um, one can observe that F star gamma is, uh, is left adjoint. This is completely straightforward uh, from the definition. Uh, to this to this forgetful functor u. So that kind of um, hints uh, the way to to generalize this to infinity rings. You want to define a category, a suitable category of gamma filtered lambda rings, um, which has this forgetful functor, and then you take the left adjoint. So we need to define a infinity category of 
gamma filtered. Lambda, the infinity rings. So I will build up to this definition um, in a number of steps. Of course, the first thing one has to look at what should it actually mean to have a lambda E infinity ring. So first subsection of this would be to discuss lambda E infinity rings. And, um, and this is due to um, four authors. It's not yet published, but it's kind of implicit in their work and there's some talks online where they talk about it. So this notion is due to um, Barbie, Glassman, Matthew, and Nicolaus. So yet unpublished. What they did publish so far, I'm gonna mention in a minute. And um, and so um, all what I'm saying in this section is is my interpretation of what they're doing, and so there might be inaccuracies. But my understanding of this work is the following: First of all, one has to um, be clear about how to define algebraic structures in general on, on, uh, on spaces instead of on sets. And um, there is a machinery of universal algebra which does that, uh, which is the notion of a Lovier theory. Lovier theory is, um, it's a very neat categorical way to phrase um, the definition of all kinds of algebraic structures. So it's a category um, T with objects, the integers n in greater than zero and such that Object n is actually the n-fold Cartesian product in the cat category theory sense of the object one. So the object one is sort of the generic object of the theory and, and the mapping spaces give you the n area operations. Um, um, so recall this is just the, maybe I should write it like that. So this n here is of course just the nth Cartesian power of one. So it's a set of all n area operations. Um, which can be defined in this particular theory. So for example, I have T the theory of commutative rings. And the set of all binary operations, well, you might think is just addition and multiplication. These are the binary, binary operations for, for rings. But in this formalism, you have to take all binary operations that you could possibly formulate in the language of rings. And these are just given by polynomials in the two variables. And the sum and the product are just two examples of such polynomials. Or if you take um, the theory of lambda rings, what are the unary operations? Well, they are all combinations of the lambda operations. So it's a polynomial ring in the lambdas. Um, let me write a lower index. But these correspond to the lambda operations. Um, 
which is actually the free lambda ring in one variable on the set lambda one. And this is a general feature of the theory. The n area operations are in bijection with the free object on n variables. And then, um, so this is sort of a template or a pattern for the algebraic structure and then an actual algebra you get by mapping this T to any category. Um, C with binary products. So this is just a product preserving functor. to see where, where the generic object one is sent to to the algebra, to the object in C that has the algebraic structure. Okay. Um, and then to define lambda rings. So all of these definitions make sense with categories replaced by infinity categories. There is not much literature on this, but there's a paper by um, Nikolaus Groth and Kepner, I think which discusses Laubier theories in, in infinity categories. So coming back to lambda rings, one starts with the category of finite free being groups. This is an ordinary category. I think I have to speed up. And so this category has many functors corresponding to, to um, for example, exterior powers, tensor products, symmetric powers. And, um, and in fact, all of these polynomial combinations here can be, are induced by functors on this category. And um, indeed, if you take the K0 of the category of polynomial functors, which are also scheme enriched, so on the morphism spaces, um, which are again free abelian groups, you have a, um, a functor that is induced by a scheme map viewing the morphism spaces as affine spaces. So that's what I mean by scheme enriched. And so all polynomial scheme enriched functors, K0 of this exact, exact category is just again the free lambda ring on one variable. And um, so in fact, one can um, one can recover the uh, the Lowe theory of lambda rings from this category um, as taking the K zero. So the maps in my theory of lambda rings from an arbitrary n to an arbitrary m is just the K zero of scheme enriched polynomial functors. But now I'm taking the nth Cartesian power of this category, which is again an, an exact category. And then the next step is, once I phrase things this way, um, the next step is pretty clear. Everything works with categories replaced by infinity categories. Um, in, in other words, I get a Lovier theory not enriched in sets. So this K0 is just a set, but I get a, a category enriched in um, in spaces, so an infinity category. And all I have to do is replace the K0 by the K theory space, which is a big step. So I shouldn't say all I have to do. That is the main result they have published so far that um, because the composition fu functors here on this, if you compose functors, you, you get um, a polynomial a polynomial functor. So, so to make actually a category out of this definition, you need functoriality of the K-theory space under polynomial functor. So you want to take the K-theory space here of this category, not just the K0, but because the composition of, of, of these functors is, is a polynomial map, you need functoriality of the K-theory space under, um, under polynomial maps. And this is a very beautiful paper that they've published already. Um, 
So the entire K theory space, not only the K groups, um, are functorial under polynomial or functors of additive exact stable categories. So they've actually, they've actually only published it for stable categories. So, but let me not go to the, into these kind of details. I mean, okay, um, I think I'm running behind. So the only thing I need for the next steps is that there is this Lovier theory, which I call T lambda E infinity of lambda E infinity rings. And um, each such ring has an, an underlying E infinity ring. So that just means in terms of Lovier theory, there is a morphism of um, Lovier theories. From the usual theory of E infinity rings to my lambda um, E infinity rings. And from now on, I will just use this as a black box. So whatever definition this theory has, um, it would just work as long as it has an underlying e infinity ring. So there's this morphism. That's all I need in the following. So I'm just using their work as a black box. Okay, so then one has to talk about filtered rings. And this is a standard definition. Um, so this is sort of, has been considered by a number of authors. So we consider N as a symmetric monoidal category where the monoidal structure comes from the addition of numbers and the category structure comes from the order relation of numbers. And then one takes the functor category into a connective spectra and um, so this has, again, an induced symmetric monoidal structure, which is called the day convolution. Um, symmetric monoidal um, structure. Um, and the filter D infinity ring is, um, so the category of such I call filtered CL connective is the commutative algebra objects in this symmetric one order category. So an object is a filtered spectrum, just like before, but now I don't have inclusions of, 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 of rings and ideals, I just have maps of spectra with lots of multiplicative structure maps. So in particular, there is um, there is a multiplication map unique up to homotopy, but then there's many other maps that give coherence um, maps for these multiplicative structures. So these are all encoded in this very compact definition using, of course, Lurie's uh, work on higher algebra. Uh, so let's just leave this for now. And um, to define my, remember the, the eventual goal is to define a category of gamma filtered lambda infinity rings. And these will also be algebras for a Lovier theory, but not in the sense I mentioned so far, but a Lovier theory, which has many underlying spaces. So like a filtered um, infinity ring, it not only has one underlying space, namely the space underlying S0, it has a whole sequence of spaces. And this can also be axiomatized by this uh, concept of Lavier theory, but it's now called an n-sorted Lavier theory. Um, so you need a forgetful functor to spaces. Um, let's call it again u for underlying space, but now it's a whole sequence of spaces um, indexed by n are uh, sending a filter ring to the underlying spaces on the infinity n. And one can um, write down a number of conditions on such a functor um, for, the, for it to be isomorphic to a forgetful functor for algebras of a Lavier theory. And this functor U satisfies these conditions. Imply that, so the category of the infinity rings is actually isomorphic to a category of algebras of some n-sorted Lavier theory, which I call 
empty fill the infinity. And n sort it just means that it has underlying not a single underlying space, but a whole sequence of underlying spaces. Uh, sorry for this mess. Okay, and then the next step is to introduce filtered lambda e infinity rings. In the ordinary case of ordinary commutative rings, if, if your filtered commutative ring has a lambda ring structure on um, F0, it makes sense to ask if, it, if this induces a lambda structure on the ideals. So all one needs to require is that the lambda operations preserve the ideals. But in the infinity context, the context of spectra, this doesn't make sense. One cannot induce a map um, just by restricting on the underlying sets. So the maps have to be given a priori on the ideals. So this, um, uh, all these structures have to be introduced explicitly. And so, um, so the idea of the definition of filtered um, Lambda e infinity rings is as a fiber product of categories of algebras. So on the one hand, a filtered lambda e infinity ring should have an underlying filtered e infinity ring. So you take this as one factor in your fiber product. Um, so this is the category I want to define filtered lambda e infinity rings. It's a fiber product. Um, so it should also have a sequence of underlying lambda um, e infinity ideals. So this is something one has to define, but I don't have time to do this. So it's a whole sequence. It's again, a functor of the ordinate set N into the category of algebras of ideals of uh, lambda e infinity rings. Um, so this is the two sorted Fabian theory. ideals, and maybe you can guess what this should mean. And so you have a, an object with two underlying spaces. One of them is a structure of e infinity ring. The other one has an ideal. I mean, lambda e infinity ring. And then we have a similar thing for e infinity rings without lambda structure. And you take this fiber product. Um, so similar, this is also two-sorted um, be a theory of ideals um, in infinity rings without lambda. And so, uh, and so if you, you can have an underlying a functor to underlying spaces. So each of these has a sequence of underlying spaces, just like um, in the above example. And this forgetful functor satisfies the axioms necessary for it to come from a Lavier theory. So this product, this category that is defined as a fiber product here is also a category of algebras um, or an n-sorted Lavier theory, which I call filtered um, lambda e infinity rings. Or some unsorted of the theory of filtered lambda e infinity rings. So that's the next step. And then the last step is to actually define what, what are gamma filtered lambda e infinity rings. And, um, and for this, I cannot define the algebras directly. I really need to introduce this 
gamma operations by by hand. So recall um, what the condition on the gamma filtered in uh, gamma filtered lambda ring in the ordinary context was. So you have the gamma operations on F1, the kernel of the augmentation. And the condition was that it sends F1 to Fn. So that's a factorization. So that means the structure map from Fn to F1 should have a lift. Um, and this you can kind of define by hand. You can modify the Navier theory of filtered lambda e infinity rings, which I defined in the previous section by introducing these operations by hand. So this is now an operation going from the space index by one to the space index by n, and it should make this a commutative diagram. And this can, um, so this is a diagram without the dotted arrow, it's a diagram in, in my category, in my Lavier theory, um, this, which is in particular a category. And I'll define a new Lavier theory by introducing this factorization. So, um, so this diagram without the dotted arrow corresponds to a map of what's called the second outer horn of delta two. So this, I mean, this is obviously a two simplex, right? And the non-dotted arrows correspond to what people call an outer horn, and um, and then the whole diagram is a two simplex delta two, and you do this for all n. So um, so you have a map from um, uh, from uh, the union over all n lambda two two. this category, then you take some kind of push out of this to delta two. But of course, you have to make sure that the push out is again, Lavier theory. And this can be done using some technology from Lurie's uh, first book. And this gives me a new Lavier theory, which is the final one I want is gamma filtered by infinity rings. So it's kind of the universal Lavier theory fit, fitting into such a diagram where I have this factorization of gamma n into some gamma n tilde. Um, so this is sort of, uh, this is uh, initial among such theories. A certain category has an initial object. Um, in, yeah. Um, N sorted Lavier theories fitting into such a diagram. Okay. Um, and then the last thing one can prove is that the forgetful functor. So all of these objects have again a sequence of underlying spaces. Um, so in particular, um, I have a functor from my gamma filtered lambda e infinity rings uh, to just ideals in the, in the infinity rings. So this was the theory I called it lambda. So it sends the gamma filtered lambda e infinity ring to just the first ideal f1, f0. And this uh, functor has a fully faithful left adjoint. Let's call it L1 something. And, um, and then one can finally define the gamma filtration. So let R H the homomorphism. Of lambda e infinity rings. Where H is, um, is just binomial. So it's like the 
locally constant z-valued functions that we had before. So h is binomial and discrete. So it, it's concentrated in, in pi zero. It doesn't have higher homotopy groups. Um, and you also need that the map from pi zero r to pi zero h, which is h, is subjective. You can uh, just achieve by replacing epsilon by its image. So then um, the fiber of epsilon going to R is, a, is an ideal in a lambda infinity ring. So it's an object um, of the algebras over this two sorted Lavier theory. Um, and so to, to this object, I can apply the left adjoint. So define F star gamma of R, but it only not only depends on R, but on the augmentation as the left adjoint applied to this object to find R. And um, since L1 was fully faithful, so you have the um, unit of the adjunction is an isomorphism we indeed have that this is a filtration on the given ring. So the F0 gamma R is R and the F1 gamma R is just the fiber of itself. So that's the outline of the definition. And um, it's not so hard to show that it satisfies this property C. So on, 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 on pi zero, you really get the classical gamma filtration because by the definition of gamma filtered E infinity ring, it's pretty clear that all these products of the gammas, they lie in the image of pi zero of n. And to get the other inclusion, you have to use the fact that um, K zero itself is a lambda E infinity ring. It's a discrete one, but it's also a lambda E infinity ring. So by the universal property, you do get a map, universal property of the left adjoint, you do get a map. And so that gives you the map um, the other way. So. So on K0, you really get the classical gamma filtration um, with this definition. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say for today. I just thank the speaker. So uh, are there any <laughs> questions? Okay. Yeah. I have a small question, Matthias. Yes. You said that uh, about the con connection with uh, higher char groups with rational coefficients, you said that yeah. there is some hope that it's... Yeah, um, because of course one doesn't compare it to the char groups directly, you compare it to the classical gamma filtration for which it's known that it's rationally yeah. isomorphic to the Adam's eigenspaces, which are the higher char groups, right? So okay. this part is known. So again, I have to compare it to the classical gamma filtration and I get one inclusion uh, immediately and the other inclusion I think I can do rationally, but I haven't really written up anything or, yeah. But that would be the strategy. Just compare it to the classical filtration. And so you do expect that integrally you would get higher char groups yeah. in the regular case, I mean. <sighs> Only after a tau chiffification. So I don't expect anything uh, with the risky uh, thing. It's, Why not? It, uh, um, well, yeah, why? Um, do I have a particular reason? Uh, Sorry, don't, don't. Yeah, no, don't no I don't know. I just I wonder. Think, yeah, so. So coming back to what I said before, this point B, um, you get the expected answer if and only if you can show that the maps are injective. And if you just look at how this left adjoint is defined, if you just take the left adjoint of the infinity ring, um, you get some tensor powers, but in the sense of spectra, so you probably get higher homotopy groups. And, and so that's my rough idea why this, map is probably not injective on the pi i, so. But uh, I don't have any examples that would contradict it. Maybe it's true, I don't know. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Andres. I have a, a stupid question. So uh, here, for example, yeah, this is a part of E. When X is regular, you said, uh, yeah, we have this isomorphism. This uh, the cohomology group using this uh, gamma filtration is isomorphism to this higher charge group. So the left hand side is the left hand side. This cohomology serial uh, is, is this one a multi big cohomology serial? Um, it's a cohomology theory. Well, it's certainly a graded ring. Yeah, it's a, it's an. Um... I mean, uh, so uh, at the beginning you mentioned something like uh, we try to find a universal cohomology theory, right? To uh, then, and then all others affect through that one. Yeah. So yeah, it will it... have this universal mm -hmm. property only rationally. So even integrally um, the gamma filtration does not have this universal property. If you look in SGA6, he defines an integral theory that has the universal property um, in terms of um, the universal recipient for churn class maps, but he only shows it that, shows that it's equivalent to the gamma cohomology rationally, not integrally. Um, so this is already can be found in SGA6. Um, so, so integrally, this gamma theory is probably a little bit ad hoc, I would guess. Rationally, it satisfies a universal property, yes. But there's not much research on what this integral gamma uh, theory actually gives, either on K0 or on higher K groups. Um, maybe it's better than one would expect. I don't know, but it does not satisfy the universal property, I think. If you if you if you mean uh, integrally it satisfies the universal property, then for example, if we take a can we can we take a eta cohomology group because the coefficient is in ZL, so yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, can... would, yeah. Mm. Um, I mean the universal property I was talking about is also as is only as a recipient of churn class maps. So I, I don't know what other universal property one could try to formulate. Um, so by that, I mean a cohomology theory, which has churn classes, which satisfy all the identities with respect to addition, multiplication and lambda operations that one has um, usually. So for that, you can make a universal recipient. Um, But um, my hope is that in the, if you, I mean, of course you can take this definition and chiefify it for the atal topology. And my hope is that then for a regular scheme, even integrally, it will come, it will um, be um, isomorphic to the atal chiefified higher char groups. This would be, this would be um, very interesting for L value conjectures. But I mean, the reason there might be some hope is because the stocks in the atal topology, they're almost uh, divisible. I mean, they're divisible groups, but they're almost Q vector spaces. And hopefully the part that's not uniquely divisible, one can, one can handle somehow. Um, mm, okay, okay, that would okay. be really very nice if after atal chiefification, it gives back the char groups because the atal chiefified char groups appear in special value projectors. So, yeah. Any other questions? I don't know, yeah. Mm. So uh, is there any other question? So if no, uh, let's thank our speaker again. Okay, thank you.